discover China. The discovery of an animal skull brought to light an amazing find in this valley, proving it was a home for these gentle giants. Will the blooming bamboo endanger these animals who have survived such a massive catastrophe? Discover China goes deep into the forest of Jojanko Valley to learn more about Donga, the panda. In May 2003, staff members of the Science and Research Office of the Jojango Administration discovered an animal skull beneath the waterfall of one of its lakes. Initially, they could not tell what kind of animal the skull belonged to and took it for further studies. On August 4, 2003, experts from the Animal Research Institute of the Chinese Academy of Science along with the Forest Science Research Institute of Sichuan Province, came to Jojango Valley to identify the skull. They found that it belonged to a panda. Jojango is located in the Aba Chung and Tibetan Autonomous region of Sichuan Province. The mountains here are all 4,000 meters above sea level on average. All of the mountain peaks are covered in snow year-round. The valley looks like a jade belt winding between the mountains. At the bottom of the valley, lays the beautiful Zhou Jai Go. Zhou Jai Go Valley ranges at an altitude from over 1,000 meters to nearly 5,000 meters above sea level. Thanks to the nature of this valley's terrain, many ancient animals and plants were able to survive here. Over 100 different kinds of precious herbs can be found here. The human population in Jojango has been blessed by nature, and for the most part, they show their appreciation by living with it in harmony. Jojai Go, or Valley of the Nine Villages, directly correspond to the nine Tibetan villages which are nestled among the mountains and lakes in Jojai Go. About 1,000 Tibetans live in this area. Their houses are scattered in the valley. Their lives are as serene as the mountains and as calm as the lakes. Water is vital to them. They farm with rainwater and have erected water mills by the streams. They lead a farmer's life. Barley, a typical plant to the plateaus, is grown in their fields. Historically, some 2,000 years ago, the ancestors of the valley residents moved there from the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau in order to escape the turmoil of war. Zhongjango Valley was not well known outside of China until 1970. Pandas inhabited the Zhongjango Valley some 10 million years ago. 
They have been accompanying the local people for generations. This pond, called Panda Lake, received its name because pandas were often seen drinking its waters. There is a legend around the valley about drunken pandas. While drinking water, a panda would often confuse its reflection in the water for another panda trying to fight it for the water. To drive away this competitor, the panda would beat its own reflection while drinking. Its competitor remained, and the panda would become drunk from drinking too much water. It would sway to the bank, fall to the ground, and sprawl into a deep slumber for hours. This shows how adorable a panda can be. When the scientists revealed that the skull found at the lake belonged to a panda, they estimated that it had died two years ago at the tender age of only four years. Why was there only one skull found? The experts surmised that the panda must have died somewhere upstream. Its skull was washed to Panda Lake. According to recent observations, approximately 10 pandas now live in the Jojigo area. The valley has always been a favorable location for pandas. However, why do so few of them remain? Jia Guo and his family have been living in Zhou Jai Go for generations. The Tibetans living in Zhou Jai Go called the panda bears Donga, meaning white bear. The valley residents have been leading a self-sufficient and peaceful life. Sitting by the warm stove, Jia Guo tells an interesting experience of his. <laughs> These jolly giants behave like the true masters of their domain. Human beings, together with the pandas, live harmoniously in nature, far away from the noisy world. In the 1990s, Zhou Jai Go Valley experienced droughts for several consecutive years. Panda Lake had dried up. Though Zhou Jai Go was listed as a nature reserve for giant pandas, pandas were rarely seen here. According to Japanese records, Empress Wu Tzu Tian of the Tang Dynasty sent a pair of pandas to Japan's emperor in 685. 
Pandas have since become one of Japan's national treasures. Pandas were chosen as a mascot for the 1993 Asia Games and as part of the 2008 Olympic mascots. This way, the Chinese people displayed their well wishes to the pandas. However, the living conditions for the giant pandas do not allow for much optimism. According to reports from the Xinhua News Agency, in November 2005, bamboo was blooming in large quantities in Sichuan, especially along the Minshan mountain range. This endangered the survival of the wild pandas. Bamboo blooming is a natural phenomenon. It is part of the seeding and propagating process of bamboo. It has been recorded in an ancient book titled Shanghai Jing, the Book of Mountains and Lakes. Bamboo withers in the same year it blooms. This natural cycle of the bamboo proves to be ironically cruel to the giant pandas. The bamboo's day of blooming also spells their demise, at which time the pandas face starvation. In 2004, due to high altitude, the bamboo in the area began to bloom. The area where the pandas forage for food began to shrink. The bamboo in Zhou Jaiko and the northern Minshan Mountain began to bloom with more intensity. In the 1970s and 1980s, large areas of bamboo bloomed in Sichuan, which caused over 200 giant pandas to die of famine and disease. Some of the corpses decayed. Others were torn apart by wolves. Some baby pandas cuddled with their mothers and died together in the snowy valley. A baby panda, less than six months old, died one step away from its mother, but never taste its mother's milk again. The mother was frozen to death while her cub was crying out in hunger, engulfed by the howling valley winds. It was reported that the giant pandas began eating dried tree branches when they could not find enough bamboo. Perhaps the lack of their staple foods led to the changes in their dietary habits. The image of a panda holding bamboo in its paws may be viewed differently in the future, should the species be lucky enough to survive. Many people were concerned about the fatal threats posed to the giant pandas by these unexpected environmental changes. The pandas soon received unprecedented attention. The government of Sichuan province drafted a rescue plan for the giant pandas under the Blooming Bamboo Emergency Act. The sanctuary was equipped with rescue vehicles and necessary drugs. Once a sick or hungry giant panda was detected, the rescue team would set off immediately. In the past, the living environment of the giant panda was undisturbed and many kinds of bamboo were growing in the area. When one type of bamboo bloomed, the giant panda could simply search for other types not in bloom in order to survive. With economical growth, reclamation of the mountains and forests had increased. The giant panda's territory had shrunk to the upper parts of the mountains, which looked like many isolated islands. These areas lacked water, which resulted in only one species of bamboo growing there. Once this bamboo bloomed, there was no alternative for the pandas to feed on. It proved a fatal threat to their survival.
In addition, mining operations, hydroelectric plants, and factories set up in the area also threatened the giant panda's survival. The good news is, as Zhou Jingo was listed as a natural world heritage site, the mines and plants in the area of the giant panda reserve have been going through major improvements or simply closed down. New factories in the area would be under stricter scrutiny. The Sichuan local government has planned to restore the original vegetation around the 2D Ling mountain range in 10 years time so that a green passage 4 kilometers wide and 20 kilometers long would be formed. This will allow pandas from neighboring mountains to go about freely. This will allow for a better environment for the panda survival and reproduction. Just when things were turning for the better. May 12, 2008. A massive earthquake hit Wenchuan, the area where the giant pandas live. This catastrophic event would no doubt make the panda's life even more difficult. How did it affect these animals? After the quake, a new word regarding the pandas came to people's attention. It was Nian Sun. Nian means pursue, while Sun stands for bamboo shoot. The forest protection staff gave a straightforward explanation on the term. Bamboo begins its growth at altitudes ranging between 1,300 and 3,000 meters in the beginning of March every year. The bamboo shoots are very nutritious. The giant pandas make their seasonal migration following the growth of the new bamboo. Their mating season comes along with this season in April and May of every year. The bamboo shoots are the panda's lifeline during this season. Many surveys show that the birth of a panda would be postponed if the bamboo season is delayed. The giant pandas would go where there are the most bamboo shoots, leading them to higher ground. As they pursue the bamboo shoots, their physical condition becomes better and mating and birth regain their natural course. With the earthquake, the annual bamboo season became irregular. The Wolong Giant Panda Reserve is one of the most important protected areas for pandas. The earthquake has destroyed the vegetation on 64 square kilometers in Wolong, comprising of 30% of the reserve's total area. The destroyed area is below an altitude of 2,500 meters, an area most frequented by the giant pandas. Forest protection personnel estimated that the changes in the bamboo season patterns would influence the breeding and migration of the wild giant pandas. The impacts would not be short term. It might generate a long lasting impact on the wild panda. Compared to the past, the natural living habitat for the wild pandas has shrunk with a total of over 10,000 square kilometers scattered over 30 counties. The severe territorial segregation has led to the formation of 20 individual panda groups. The passages linking up the groups has yet to be completely established. This map shows the giant panda territorial segregation in Sichuan province. Eight giant panda groups are separated throughout eight different locations. The area the earthquake struck has many deep canyons and geological disasters are frequent. With the construction of highways and development of tourism, the condition of the isolated panda groups is worsening.
analysis of the earthquake's influence on the giant panda is incomplete. It is yet to be confirmed by scientific research. The priority at the moment is to closely monitor the giant pandas. Information from the Sichuan Forestry Department states that the giant panda protection system and infrastructure set up in 30 sanctuaries along the Minshan and Chonglai Mountains over the years have been seriously damaged by the earthquake. Experts are concerned that observation cannot properly be carried out if the infrastructure is not restored in time. As the winter draws close, bamboo in high altitudes is covered by snow. The food supply of the wild giant pandas in the region becomes a major problem. This is the most important issue that scientists need to tackle. Most of the animals described in the Book of Mountains and Lakes have completely vanished. Only the panda has survived through evolution. From being a ferocious carnivore, it has become a docile bamboo eater. The panda is a very intelligent animal. Legend has it that if a panda is sick, it would come down from the mountain and knock on a farmer's door, or it would pick up and eat iron or steel crumbs as medicine. It would rest in front of the farmer's house until it recovered. Before it left, it would knock on the farmer's door again to show its appreciation. On its way back to its home between the bamboo, it would look back to the farmer's house in farewell. For thousands of years, locals in Jojainko have been living in harmony with this wonderfully clever animal. They have been sharing all of nature's offerings. It is fortunate that the panda, a species that existed for eons, can still survive to this day and age. Will it be able to go on living throughout this century? Will future generations of Jago's family still understand the meaning of the words Donga? People in China and around the world sincerely wish that together we can save these gentle giants.